All right, we're in Colorado on public land. Took us a couple days to get this bad boy, but uh, you wanna see how we got there? We're in the middle of somewhere in Colorado to elk camp. <laughs> I mean, it was such a good spot, TJ. We don't want to give away too many uh, secrets, right? Hoyt RX-7. Why'd you get a Thanks, new... Thanks, Evan. Why'd you get a new bow? Well, because I think I have a torn labrum in my left shoulder on the posterior side. And stabilizing with my left arm really hurts my shoulder. So you're shooting left-handed? So I'm shooting left-handed. So as if it wasn't already hard enough to kill an elk, let's make it even harder. We're here. Might as well scout a little bit. If we're scouting, we might as well carry our bows, right? Send for your mother, send for your father too. Send for your preacher, tells you tell will bury you. Where are we going this morning? I don't really know. Yeah. Uh, ask Dodds, he knows. <laughs> Your way and they can go Dodds way. And then we can split up if we want to throughout the day or stay together, it doesn't matter. So we can all go up the mountain again once we get up there. Sit some meadows or something. <clears throat> with a ton of wallows. All right. See you boys in a little while. See you later. the entire time, hillside to hillside, bunch of meadows. Once we get a little bit further back in there, we could probably split up in two groups. Okay. Just stay a few hundred yards apart from each other. Right. And then maybe meet back up and roll some On this first morning, we took an established trail in to get as far away as we could from other people in hopes that the elk would be less pressured. We also found out later that it's better to take the long way on a trail than a shorter distance making your own. We saw sign almost every spot we went, but tried to stay in the places that had the most recent signs since elk will move around so much at different elevations at different times of the year, depending on weather and pressure. Today. Matching? Have you heard of yet? No, that's his gig. So he shows up. She um, might go like the straight, like, we tried to go you know what I mean? Boom, right baby. Right. We took off out here and then just kind of go along the wood line. That's legit. Parallel with We're just feeding it. Yeah. Just kind of so, I bought one of those uh, Reaper things you put on your nose. If you don't get a little bit on your nose, you're not doing it right anymore. No call. Go down that way a little bit. Do the same thing ish. Go out as far as you want to where you think and then come back here, meet at four, and then we'll hunt the same that we saw stuff, signs. Yeah. 
You ever seen Muppet Treasure Island? They're like, they get, they're on a pirate ship. They become, some of them become pirates. And he's like, I've got cabin fever. He's like, I've got it too. <laughs> Me and Bailey, Dan Bailey, used to say that all the time. I've got it too. Way back, maybe drop down a little, a little bit. Lower. What do you think, Scott? I still don't think it exists. <laughs> the bull went back. Kind of miss, but we spooked it. Spooked a group. I didn't see anything. We had a kind of a similar encounter. David's exact words were, "TJ got bored." I said, "Yeah, but TJ's a little—he's an idiot, but he's a little smarter than that to just let out a shitty bugle right at two o'clock." I start walking through the rocks. I go down, and they start coming up, and then all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. So we don't know. We saw one big-bodied animal. Um, we don't know if it's a cow or a bull. So we heard the, the bugle, we thought farther out, but it might have been facing that way because we're up here, bugle was out here, herd was here. So there was at least one big bodied animal, two cows and a calf. Did you enjoy the walk back to the truck? <coughs> well, it was a good day. We saw elk and we figured out what way not to come down the mountain. Yesterday evening was a interesting evening and then the weather forecast said it was supposed to be raining, raining this morning. So we thought, let's go ahead and uh, utilize, optimize the sleep at this point. And then we woke up and it looks like this. So it's supposed to rain this afternoon. So we can try to go at least get some some time in before it rains. TJ's gonna blow his horn. So let's mess up the rest of everybody else's. Do us your best. I can't right now, man. I'm camera shy. I need some more practice. I can hold on to it really well, though. I'll figure that part out. Credit so they sounded yesterday. No, they did not. First of all, no, first of all, it sounded like this. Is this the most important part of the hunt? The most important part. Maybe. Maybe. But there's no chance an elk lets you kill it unless you have eye black on. It's just a rumor. It's true. It doesn't look like it's like heavily foot trafficked. Yeah, we can only go across and I can just... Let's just get out before. As far away from here as we can. A little earlier if it's gonna rain this afternoon. In my opinion, they'll probably feed a little earlier and go to bed. One of the hardest parts of hunting Colorado in September is clothing choice. One minute you're sweating in a t-shirt, the next you're walking in sleet. Top and kind of look. It looks like there's some timber up there that we can sit in a little bit. I think every once in a while, letting TJ practice his bugling is probably a good idea. Mew. 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 There's no way that was an echo, right? I don't know. Hit it again. Or wait. Let's wait a minute. the echo over here. I don't think the other one was an echo. I don't think the other one was an echo because I heard it over there. Yeah. You know?
status update? It's raining. The podcast is a little wet. Why? Because crime condition. What? I didn't kill him. This has got to be hail, right? I don't know what the what's the temperature. Is. We were wearing t-shirts like an hour ago. Yeah. Remember when Tyler said it wasn't gonna start bad until three? It's not raining in his defense. That's just what the radar said, boys. In between downpours, the radar does not look uh, beneficial, so we're at least going to get closer to the truck and maybe either drop down in some timber or just uh, call it quits, depending on how nasty it gets. If it gets pretty nasty, it looks like it's going to rain pretty hard. So. It's going to rain. Isn't it? Boots are definitely a different vibe than the ones I wore yesterday. <laughs> no mirror, no problem. Oh, snap each other. The goal for day three is to go farther than most people are willing to go. Ascend a little bit, probably about two, three hundred feet in elevation, and then we're gonna try to comb up there. We're trying to get as far away from where we think people are willing to go in hopes that the elk are doing the same. We'll probably walk by about six and probably jump a herd of about six. as any. I mean, we're out in the middle of nowhere. There's no access, no good access to this. Vegetation on both sides. It's like a little super steep on both sides. I don't know. We accomplished our goal of getting away from pressure, but to no avail. Then had to hunt our long trek back to the truck. game start. Put a bugle. You hear that? A bugle. What do you do? There's another one. Put more bugles in the last 30 seconds and we have the whole 20 days that I've been on the trip. Why do we come to this spot? 
some dude told us this is where they were. Blaine, if you watch this. He was an angel. <laughs> we're, pretty sure, we're pretty sure he was an angel. He's we looked good. back and he was just gone. gone. <laughs> he didn't even come in in a car, he just disappeared walking. What? Have you ever hunted elk solo? I have not. But, it makes sense. All the idiots up top, like us. So way, way up top. Okay, well, there's another bull coming down to challenge him. Hey, let's go up top and see if we can watch him from up there and see if they, yeah. The night before, we got a tip from our friend Lane from Madison, Wisconsin, on where he was encountering elk, about 2,000 feet lower than we had been hunting previously. four nights are we get so caught up in Jojo the little circus pet we see an elk and then it disappears and then we've got to figure out how to get back in the dark with just yeah and then now as we're walking back there's elk bugling all over the place so it's great Pretty Nat Geo stuff going on around here. What's our strategy this morning? Find elk, Scott. The same thing we do every day. Try to take over the world. So yesterday, all of yesterday we were up, we came up over those, that hill right there. We had that encounter with that bull yesterday morning. We think over there, there's a giant herd of elk over here, but it's on private land. This is national forest and there's almost like a land bridge between two private properties and some uh, Bureau of Land Management property. We don't know if there's less pressure in here or what, but we're gonna try. We're not gonna go down without a fight. You can do all the physical preparation you need, but it is nearly impossible to condition yourself to the emotional ups and downs, excitement and disappointment of chasing elk. You can see those trees. That's where the wall was, right? The wall was to the left of those trees. Yeah. And then we dropped down even more. Yeah. Last day, best day? Probably not, Scott, but we're here. Really no keys. Let's go kill some stuff. This moment was a culmination of four trips, one to Montana, three to Colorado, 22 days in the woods, hundreds of miles of walking, 
thousands of feet of elevation ascended. In this moment, we learn to always be on alert because you never know when you're going to have your chance. This elk slipped in silently with none of us prepared and stared at us for 11 minutes before giving us a shot. From despair to happy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Whoa. Just. Oh. Oh. I thought it went over. I thought it went over. I thought it went right over him. To go from heartbreak to at least like. That's awesome. Let's go. I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> He went that way. Yeah, let's give him some time. Give him some time. Yeah, let's go. Let's go sit. Oh, oh, meal time. Shit. How do you feel? I don't. I don't feel yet. <laughs> oh my gosh! Do you have no idea how I felt like I let you guys all down right there? <laughs> so at least we got a blood trail. I thought I had just ruined this entire trip. <laughs> so what do we do now? Wait. We'll give him 30 minutes or so. Yeah. It didn't sound like an I'm dead crash, like he was crashing through the yeah. trees. I just laid down. But he could have. He got five guys to find a bull. Oh, yeah. In the middle of the day too, that's good. It's not a night time. And I couldn't tell if he was looking right at us, so I'm trying not to move. And then, like, and then I was like, I'm firing an arrow. Whether he, and so he started working back, so I, I drew. You're getting impatient. And I was, well, I just didn't know if he, Why I didn't want to try and shoot him in the head. <laughs> I thought he was. I'm not living with three more years of watching that one just sit there. What was it, like five by five? I couldn't really tell. I think it was a five by five. Imagine me being the one to see that though. <laughs> no, no, he goes, and there's a boy. Five by five? I'll take that. Six? Five by six. Jeez. Let's go. Let's go. Whoa. Good enough. Yep. He was kind of quartering away, so he probably he probably got more vitals than he's saying. Velvet on there. Five. You got five on that side. One, two, three, Eight. four, five, six. Count it. There we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go dude. I don't even care. Oh man. Hey, thanks, guys. Heck yeah. Good. Good week. Bro. Thank you for your service. Thanks for being in the right place at the right time. Mm hmm. You want to work on Kathan? Sure, what do I do? Yeah. I'm going to start quartering this hind. Who's outdoor edging this? What do we do? Just keep working this back? Or do we wait to go to the other side and then cut it? Uh, keep working it back. You don't want to take the whole neck on your back. That's what I do. It's like this. Just keep it above the Watch out! I'm gonna sit down though. Let that man help. 
way down hot. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> it's like, it's gonna suck. <laughs> yeah, it's up top. That's pretty cool. Take a bite. Come on, Elvin. Tagged. How does it feel? Stand up. Really heavy. Hey, you guys need rope? If you can hand it right here. To this moment, elk hunting was on my top five list of hardest things I've ever done. After this hour and 45 minute trek, this moved it to the top of that list. My heart rate averaged 141 and peaked at 165 in that time. Where is this rank for hard workout to done this year? Probably tough. It's just, it's hard. But it's meant, like physically it's hard, but I'd say mentally, it's just a grind, demoralizing. What's harder, leaving Colorado with no off or packing it out? I'll take packing it out any day, but this is definitely harder for sure. Physically harder. I've been so happy to be on a road. <laughs> ah! Yeah! <laughs> My legs. Oh man, thank you boys. Feet. Everything. You will be rewarded with some meat. All right, that's a wrap from Elk Camp. Gonna get this big boy loaded up in some ice. Half of it's gonna go back to Tennessee. Some's gonna head back with uh, old Dave Curtis here with NZ Campers. And now you're gonna see what we're gonna do with it. So, we've got two different styles here. This is backstrap, all of it's backstrap. If you want to see the entire video on how to prepare it, check the uh, Fit Boss Fit Boss videos that we did with uh, Chef Sean. So shout out to Chef Sean. Uh, we just took the hanger steak recipe and put it on the elk. So this is elk backstrap stripped up. Got some backstrap with uh, just garlic salt. So we're gonna give that a go. That way we get the full experience. But it's like adobe chilies, some honey. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff. You have to check out the other video, sorry. But we we'll put the recipe in the description. So, we're on the pit boss. Everything that I've read says cook it fast um, and leave it relatively rare. Not necessarily rare, but don't overcook it. Do some quick shifts on a couple pieces and then uh, we just took it to a local processor and had the whole thing processed. We brought home a ham, a shoulder, back straps, and the loins. Left Curtis with the strat or the shoulder and ham just because his family eats this a lot. And this will just be me and my kids. Hillary probably won't eat this. Elk steak. <laughs> Good. Good. Even with the one in one in sign. 